Hello everyone. This is the second video about creating a single page business application using WebExJet. In the previous video, I showed you how to load and display data in a simple app for managing a shop. Today I will show you how to edit the data. Let's begin with the data table with customers in the customers.js file. Our goal is to enable editing, adding and removing customer records. You can edit data with the built-in means. Add cell editors to every column. With detailed data, a more user-friendly way is to edit it with a form. I will place a form beside the data table, show it, and then hide it when it is needed. Webex has a useful layout for this case, multi-view. With its help, I will divide the view into two parts, data table and form, and show them in turn. So without further ado, let's add the form. If I add the form code in the same file with the data table, the code will become too long. That's why I'd better move the data table into a separate file, customersdata.js. Next, I will import customers data into customers.js. Create multi-view and put customer data in the first cell. I will leave the second cell empty for now and put a placeholder there for the future form. Each cell must have an ID, as this will be needed for navigation between them. Multi-view is animated by default, but sliding animation effect does not look really good with wide cells, so I will switch it off. I will also disable default auto-sizing of cells, because the form is much shorter than the data table. I want both cells to stretch vertically. By now the Views folder has a pretty lot of files. I will create a subfolder for forms. The form has a collection of inputs and buttons. Note that all inputs have names that correspond with the data column IDs in the data table. I will also add simple validation rules. You can easily make them more complex. For details, visit our documentation. And I will also add some basic styling for the form and its elements. Now I will import the form into Customers view and put it into the second cell of MultiView. The form is ready, but there is yet no way to show it and edit the data. I will add pencil icons to each row of the data table. Webex data table has a few built-in templates that add small controls into columns. I will add one of them, Edit Icon. To control the form, I will use a suitable JET technique, Application URL with Parameters. I can pass the ID of a customer that I want to edit as a URL parameter. The form will receive this ID and get the corresponding item data. The app URL can be changed with the show method of a view. I will add an action for clicks on pencils and call show. ID in the handler is the data table row, so ID.row will get me the data ID, which is the same as the row number. Navigation is controlled with the URL change lifetime handler of JetView. URL change is called for the view that is shown and for its parent view. So in this case, it will be called for both customer's form and customer's view. Customer's view will manage navigation between the data table and the form. In its URL change, I will check if there is an ID parameter in the URL. If there is, I instruct multi-view to show the form. Parameters of the URL can be accessed with the getParam method of a view. Customer's form will fetch and visualize record data. As it also receives the same ID parameter from the URL, I can easily get the values for the corresponding record. The data in the customer's model are located asynchronously, and this can cause problems. That's why I will make sure that the data are loaded before a record is assessed. I will use the promise that it is returned by every WebEx data component and collection, wait data. The promise resolves when the data are loaded, and then I can do anything with the data. Next, I will enable closing the form and saving the data back. I will define several JetView methods for these actions. The first method will enable navigating back to the data table. The method will also do other useful stuff, like clearing the form and validation highlighting. This dot show removes the ID from the URL. This is the signal that the data table should be opened. Let's return to Customers view and add one more line in URL change handler that will show the data table if there is no ID in the URL. Now I will enable saving data. I will define one more method, save customer. The method will update the record directly in the data model if the input is valid. The view is synchronized with the data model, 
so the data updates will be reflected in the data table at once. Next, I will enable adding new records. Saving new data will be a bit different from updating, but it will not require much effort because we will use the same form. Let's open Customers View and change its interface. First, I need a button that will open an empty form. I will create a toolbar above the data table and place the button on it. The form will be opened the same way it is opened for editing records. Next, to enable adding new customers, I will modify the Save Customer method. It will update edited records as well as add new ones. I need a way to tell when to do which. The form values themselves can help me, because record data pushed to a form for editing have an ID, while new data do not have it. Although this ID is not painted in the form, it can be accessed via form.getValues. That's why the IDs can be the flags that will tell me whether the values came into the form from the data table, or they will be typed by a user into an empty form. Let's change the Save Customer method. Finally, I will hide the button when the form is opened. I will use an event of multi-view that is called when the active cell is changed. And the last thing for this data table is to enable removing of records. I will add an icon to each row of the data table. I will choose a built-in template with the trash icon. When the icon is clicked, the selected record will be removed directly from the data model, and the data table will reflect this change. It is also a good idea to prevent accidental deletion, so I will add a confirmation dialog. I'm finished with the customer's data table, so let's do the same with the remaining two, products and services. These two views use the same data table, so I will show how to edit data only for products. For services, it is done just the same. I will also edit data with the related form, but this time I will place the form into a modal window. Forms for products and services would be similar, so I will create one form for both. This form looks much like the form for customers. Now I will import the form file into products view. Windows must be initialized separately from the rest of the interface with the UI method of the JetView class. I will do this in init of products view. I will initialize the form and save it to a local class property. The property will give access to the form from products view. The form for products view has one input more than the form for services view. I will add it after the form is created. For this, I will define a custom JetView method and call it after this.ui. As the parameters, I will pass the configuration of the new input and the index or position where to put it. Now I need to fill the form with the data from the selected record. Like in the previous data table, I will add the edit icon to data view that will show the form. As the form will appear in a window, I cannot use URL parameters. I will use Jet Global Event Bus to pass the record. When a pencil icon is clicked, I will dispatch a custom jet event that signals to fill the form. It takes the clicked record data as a parameter. Now any view can listen to the event and receive the data. Event listeners can be attached in init of a view. So I will attach an event listener in product form. The handler will show the form and fill its inputs. Next, I will enable hiding the form and saving the data. I will begin with the method that will hide the window clear the form values and validation marks. Hide form will also be called after the data are saved. To save the data, I will again use a custom event. It will signal the data table that it is time to save the values, and I will add an event listener in products view. The handler will update the records in the data model, and the changes will be immediately reflected in the data table. Next, I will add a way to add new products. It will be similar to the previous data table with customers. I will put a button on the toolbar above the data table. This button will show the same window with an empty form. I will define a custom method of products form for that. Next, I will enable saving new data. I will again use IDs as flags and change the handler of the products colon save event. I will add trash icons to each row of the data table. Next, I will call an event that will signal the products view to remove the related product record from the data table. The view will listen to this event and remove the record. And like I said previously, data editing in services view is done similarly. You can view the code by the link below.
By now you can edit all the data. Add new records and delete them. In the next video, I will show you how to visualize the data in a dashboard and how to aggregate all the data in a simple pivot table.